Hello, welcome to Beal Science. I'm Craig Beals and today we're gonna to do some experimenting with pennies. I'm gonna show you how to make naked pennies. That's right, pennies that have lost their outside copper shell. You might not even have known they had a copper shell. And also hollow pennies. So hollow pennies that don't have the guts inside of them anymore. And all it takes is some simple chemistry with some simple reactions. We're gonna learn about pennies. It is important to know that not all pennies are created equal. In 1982, there was a big change in the composition of pennies. I'm gonna cut them open so you can see the insides of them. But prior to 1982, pennies were mostly copper. In 1982, about halfway through the year, the copper amount was reduced drastically. And after 1982, there just became this thin coating of copper over a core of zinc. So if we look closely at the difference in the surface of the penny, before 1982, there's a whole bunch of zinc and copper on the surface. Afterwards, there's just solid copper on the outside of the penny with zinc on the inside. This gives us two very different surfaces to play with and do some chemistry. You can see it here. Before 1982, you can see that gold copper color inside. After 1982, it's silver. It's not silver, it's zinc, but it looks silvery. We can use these differences to make hollow pennies with some simple chemistry. What we're gonna do is take our old pre-1982 pennies and our post-1982, and I'm just gonna take a triangular file and score it just enough that we're getting towards the center. Then concentrated hydrochloric acid and drop them inside. And then we're gonna start to see the chemistry happen. It's important to note that copper does not react with hydrochloric acid, but zinc does. Now think about the ones that are bubbling right now. There's a zinc core inside of there, and because we expose that zinc core, we can get a reaction. Here's the chemical reaction for what's going on. You can see the zinc, it's a copper penny, but we've exposed the zinc on the inside, is reacting with the hydrochloric acid. All those bubbles are hydrogen gas. Now, what about the other one on our left-hand side? Well, it's not reacting as much because the copper and the zinc are attached on the inside. This is what we get after we let it sit in there for a while. This is the post-1982 penny. Look at this. Look at that, it's hollow. There's still some zinc inside, but for the most part, it's hollow. You can see that copper plating on the outside of the penny. I decided, well, let's leave these in for a good long time. How about 10 days and see what happens? There's our ones with the copper coating. All the zinc is gone and the copper is left sitting there. Now look at the pre-1982, some weird chemistry happened here. We'll look at that in just a second. But let's go to the post-1982 pennies. You can see that most of the zinc is completely gone, but our pre-1982, the reason we're seeing that green is that the zinc and the copper started to separate. We can see copper ions, that's why it's green, floating around in there. And this penny just doesn't look real good anymore. That's because the copper and the zinc were mixed together and the copper didn't react, but the zinc did. So look at our 1984 penny. That thing's hollow. I mean, it's beautiful. You got this nice skin that came right off of there. These things are fun because you can make them and you can give them to people and they're like, what in the world is going on with this penny? Then you can see that really roughed up old one there that a lot of the zinc went away and some of the copper is left. It's just in rough shape. Aren't these awesome? We were successful in making a hollow penny and leaving the shell behind, but can we do the opposite? Can we remove that copper shell and leave the core behind? Well, I think we can. I'm gonna use some concentrated nitric acid. I'm doing this in the fume hood because this stuff is nasty. The first one here, we're gonna drop the copper into that nitric acid, and you're gonna see a reaction start very quickly. What's being left behind is copper nitrate. It's the copper ions that are coming out of there. That brownish orange gas, that's nitrogen dioxide. That stuff is brutal. That's why you need to do that in a fume hood. This is a highly exothermic reaction. So if you look up there, we start at about 70 degrees. We get all the way up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit as this reaction is going on. I mean, that, that's pretty wild. That shows you just how exothermic it is. So then of course I had to do the post 1982 one as well because it has a different composition. 
You can see similar reaction, takes off a little more quickly, but there is going to be a difference in our results. And that's because we have a different amount of copper in the post-1982 penny than we do in the pre-1982 penny. Look at all that blue in the 1978 penny. All that blue represents copper. There must be a lot more copper in that 1978 penny. And when we look at the differences here, that early penny still looks coppery. But our after 1982 one, look, we took that copper shell right off the top and we're left with the zinc core. We've got ourselves a naked penny. <laughs> well, I hope you learned something today. I know I did. And I actually find pennies quite fascinating, which is why we do so many projects with them here at Beale Science. If you want to learn more, come over to BealScience.com or look down in the description. We got more going on or maybe hit the subscribe button. That would sure make me happy and want me to make more videos. The whole point of me doing all this is to remind you to keep on learning. Thanks for watching. It's like tinfoil. Yeah, it feels like...